Hello, Gareth here. And in this watercolour lesson, we're going to paint this amazing sky. So about three weeks ago, I went outside my house and saw this glorious sky and uh, took a photo. And in today's lesson, I'm going to do a painting of this sky. But an important point is, I didn't really understand one of the things that makes this sky so amazing and what it is is the feeling of direction and motion so for example let me get my pen there's a feeling of movement here and there's also a feeling of movement here too and there's a feeling of movement finally going all the way up here and I think that that feeling of movement and direction really makes this sky beautiful sadly although I knew this was a beautiful sky I didn't fully understand this sense of direction and movement and I didn't really capture that in this painting. Maybe you can, but it's a very important point and I just wanted to let you know about that. So some of the other things I did in this painting is with these buildings in the distance, I made them blue. So I should say before that, that this background, I made the whole thing in one go and it's basically just a, a dark colour. I also reduced the number of these buildings in the background so maybe I had about three just I wanted to keep it simple and then I've got this foliage here that was fairly easy to do and then something that was very important was these signs. So I've got this sign here and I tried to make the angle very dramatic and kind of shooting up into the sky. And I suppose it's kind of emphasizing this vertical line here and this movement upwards. And the same with these signs. This sign I painted and also this one, but this, this shape is very ugly. So I made it more of a, an oval scene at a, yeah, an oval shape. And if you notice, there's like an angle here, an angle here and a bit of an angle on the other side. And it gives us this triangular shape that once again leads us upwards. Wow, this is getting very messy. And then at the bottom, We've got a lot of cars and I just basically deleted all of them and just had one car here because less sometimes really is more. And the car is the focal point. So I'm going, I'm not going to. What I did have was headlights here and here that would attract the attention of the viewer's eye. And uh, I think that worked quite well and all these other vehicles I just I just deleted but I had a few suggestions like I put some dark marks here and here and I had some light marks as well for the road which you really can't see but I think work well and it's good to be creative in that way and I did a few white marks over here which kind of suggested these white cars, if you can see them. But it was more an abstract kind of thing that just made the painting look better as an image. And I think that's more or less everything. These light areas in the cloud, what I did was use some titanium white mixed with a touch of yellow ochre. I'm not really sure how well that worked, 
but it was a lot of fun. And the final thing I want to say before we begin painting is I really do believe the most important thing in painting is having fun. More important than doing a good painting because it's always going to be a bit tough and there are going to be a lot of mistakes but the more you just enjoy doing it the more you'll continue not quit not get really disappointed with the mistakes and keep going and if you keep going you'll get better and so please try to enjoy it and that's the lecture over with let's get on with the painting okay let's begin i've got my pencil and this painting requires very little drawing so we've got a road here at the bottom and we've got like a big sign here and over here some signposts This one is actually bent, I think. I don't know, it's a bit strange. And then maybe about here, we've got a car. Ooh. Maybe about here, quite low. And um, then something like a tree here and then some buildings over here I don't really have to draw these buildings to be honest and I'm not going to be too accurate about them okay I think that will do Okay, so that's the drawing finished, very simple. So I'm using a real wide flat brush for this. And that's because I can cover a lot of space very quickly. And I'm just wetting it to begin with. And then I'm using a slightly smaller flat brush maybe this one mm, then again maybe this one <laughs> so oh my palette's filthy so always begin with a clean palette which I didn't okay get some yellow ochre and then have to look carefully. There's some yellow ochre here. And then here at the bottom, there's a lot. So I do this very, very roughly. And then at the bottom, I changed to red, alizarin crimson. Oh, I got a hair. And another one. It can be a bit annoying. And another one. 
Hmm. Yeah, and I can make some of these clouds a little bit warmer with this red. So let's give that a spray because it might be getting dry at the top. Now the next step is really quite difficult. We're going to do the blue. So I'm using a mix for this of my light blue and a bit of this dark blue, phthalo blue. Mix it. And then let's have a good look up here. Oh, it's still nice and wet. And then I'm going to do a little bit watery. And even more watery. It's drying out a bit here. That's dangerous. And can I soften it around here? Well, that's quite nice. I'm quite happy with that. And then we've got a touch of blue in here. I don't want to mix it too much with the yellow. It might become a little bit green. So this is difficult stuff to do and you just have to have lots of practice and eventually you just get better and better at doing it. I'm still learning. It's only been 20 years. <laughs> well, some of us learn quicker than others maybe. I think that's looking quite nice. And then down here, eh, maybe not much more. Okay, let's spray it. And I'm going to go and use this brush. Maybe it's too small, we'll find out. And then I'm going to do really dark blue, just up here. And try to blend that in. And just relax and enjoy the process, you know? Don't get too worried about making a nice painting. Just enjoy painting and one day you'll end up with a lovely painting. Yep. Yeah. It's a bit of a weird style, but I like it. Now I'm going to do the uh, shadow areas. So uh, it's a mix of this dark blue and red and a touch of yellow ochre, which will gray it off and make it less purple. Bit more. Okay, it needs to be bluer. I'll add some of this light blue. Ah, oh, that might work. I got a bit of splatter, but that does happen. And then here we go. Start up here. 
And the reason I started up here is because at first it's going to be very strong, this mix. But as we go further down, it's going to become a little bit lighter the more I mix it in. And I want it to be lighter lower down here, if possible. So I think that's looking quite nice. Okay. So let's look carefully. Now the dangerous thing is to cover everything. We really need to leave these lights. So less is more here, definitely. And um, I'm squeezing my eyes or squinting, sorry, because it helps me to see I hope it's not dry down here. It helps me to see if overall it looks correct. I need to spray at the bottom. I think it dried at the bottom. I don't spray directly at the paper. That's very important because it will um, move the paint and it doesn't look very nice. That's a very important point. Do not spray directly at the paper. Instead, spray horizontally and let the drops go down. And there is a certain pressure on you because you can't take too long painting the clouds carefully and getting it exactly right and copying the picture perfectly because it will take you too long and it will dry out and then it's not going to be this beautiful, these beautiful soft cloud shapes. It's going to have hard edges. So you've really got to get the general gist of the basic clusters of clouds and then fairly quickly paint that without getting too much splatter on stuff where you don't want it. And then hopefully it's not going to dry out on you which is uh, really not, not pleasant. Well, disappointing. And you can keep spraying it, but you have to be careful because if you spray too much, then um, it can all begin to go, your edges can be, become feathery, which you don't really want either. So I think I've done it. I can't say I'm 100% happy, or well, you never are 100% happy, but I'm a little bit disappointed with this sky. It's okay, but... And you see me fiddling here, but be very careful when you do that because I often see beginner students, they put their brush back in the water. You'll notice I've not done that. And then they put it on this paper and the paper has dried quite a bit now. It's still moist, but it's dried a lot. And that's where you'll get like a big cauliflower. I keep putting my brush back in this mix. So I'm not adding water from the bucket. So please remember that these little, these little things are so important. Yeah, I think it was a good attempt. It's not too bad. So let's leave this to dry now. Okay, this has now dried and I'm going to do the bottom part. So I haven't really left enough space, to be honest. So I'm going to have to lower these buildings a little bit. So... Uh, my drawing was maybe a bit of a waste of time. <laughs> but sometimes like that, 
So I'm going to make a dark mix. So my blue, phthalo blue, alizarin crimson and yellow ochre. A bit more phthalo blue and let's just test it. I do tend to be a bit heavy with the uh, mixes I think but But there you go. Okay. I'm using my pointed oval brush for this. It's good to do this post in one go. Probably don't do it twice like I've just done it because look. <laughs> okay, maybe we can fix this. The one good thing about making mistakes is you have to learn how to fix them and it will probably make you better at painting. So you need to do it in one go, but this is a bit wet, so I might just leave it to dry a little. Whoops, that went offline a bit, but it's good enough, I think. Okay, let's do this now. Almost. There, and I'll leave it this time. Okay, and now I'm going to get the blue. Like that. Whoops, I painted over the car. And then I might do something a bit greeny down here, but not a very strong green. So blue, touch of yellow ochre, that'll give me a greenish color. And then that's too green, I'll add this red. And then a bit more blue. And then it's a muted gray green. So. And splay the hairs like this. Hopefully I'll get some gaps in this tree. And it's drying out, so spray. Hmm. 
may be good enough. And then some blue for the body of the car. And then here I'm going to do something very purple, red and blue. I just think it looks quite good. And then dark. So add some of this yellow ochre, some more blue. spray it and leave it to dry. So I'm continuing with this wash, just spray it a bit more and I'm going to do this car windscreen. So the windscreen you've got like real dark bit. So I'll make a thick mix, blue, red, yellow ochre. So you've got a real dark bit like that and then you've got a real light bit here so i'll use just maybe hmm, maybe just pure water shall we try that see what happens hmm, that's quite nice quite interesting I like that and then I just need to leave it a little bit longer and then maybe add some details so give it a few minutes I could possibly add some birds that might be nice so I use um, this brush I don't know what it's called I call it the bee stinger And let's see. This kind of repeats this movement of the clouds shooting up. And I realise one of the reasons I'm disappointed with um, the sky is that what attracted me to this scene was the sky. And it was, way, it was the way the clouds seemed to shoot up. Um, it was really amazing and I can see that now, but I kind of forgot that when I painted the sky. And it's really just a, a basically simple pattern. It's like a, an upside down T. So you've got a line here and then you've got a vertical going up here. And although there's something like that here, yeah, that doesn't help. It's not that good. I haven't created that shooting up effect. And when I paint this again, I will do that and I will exaggerate that effect because that's really what attracted me to this scene in the first place. Yeah. Sometimes you like a scene and you kind of 
have to try and work out why uh, because sometimes you don't know exactly why or you don't think enough about why and then when you go to paint it because you haven't clarified what it is about the scene that really excites you you sometimes fail to capture that in the painting so yeah that happens to me i don't know what other people are like okay maybe now i can do some darker marks yeah well it's the right timing i just wish i was putting the marks in the right place I like that, it really looks like a windscreen. And then maybe here I've got some little suggestions. That's really what watercolour painting is uh, really wonderful at, suggestions. Oh, I love it. That might have been a mistake, I don't know. Yeah, and I think that's it. S some lovely darker marks within the already dark marks that are there. It gives it a kind of depth. Okay, let's leave it to dry. This has uh, now dried and I'm going to do the final part, which is using some uh, white paint, titanium white, and just adding a few highlights. I might be able to improve the sky a bit better and get that that pattern of the clouds shooting up. We'll see. First of all though, I'll do the bottom bit. So I think for that, maybe I'll do, yeah, I'm not sure whether to do white with a touch of red or white with a touch of blue. I think in reality, it's, <clears throat> it's um, sorry, I've got a dry throat. It's um, a slightly bluish colour, but I would prefer to do purple. Use red and have a purplish colour because I would prefer to have a, a warm, a warm look. So we'll see how that goes. And this is a car park here and it's got some lines and this road maybe has lines and you could be saying Gareth you know this is all in shadow you're not going to have these lines like almost like glowing fluorescent and that's true but I will reply, I'm not a realist painter. I know it looks very real, doesn't it? But I like to include not just a realism. I don't mind the touches of abstraction or add things that are not quite true to the reality, especially, well, if it's going to make the painting look better. At the end of the day, that's the most important thing for me, the image and what it looks like and the atmosphere. Okay, so, and I don't think people really like that. They like it if you're just purely abstract and they like it if you're totally realistic or they like it if you're impressionistic. But if you like to slide between those, then I think, you know, people can't really handle that. But I do that because it's a lot more fun. It's a lot more fun. And I think that really is what it's about, just having fun. Well, for me. So I'm squinting here. I think this um, windscreen, this front one, should be wider. So I'm not sure what to do about that yet. Yeah, I might make it wider, even wider than that. I think that's about right. Well, okay. That 
looks very powerful. I like it though. <laughs> so how am I going to do this? Yeah, I think that's quite nice. Okay, I've mostly done that. Maybe There'll be a little bit of a white line over here. Wow. There we go. do this top again. It's like a curve. Sometimes you really have to play around with it to get the effect that you want. And then that needs something, so maybe a touch of red. It's really hot and humid here in Japan and I can't switch the air conditioner on because it's too noisy, but it's giving me a bit of a dry throat. Wow, that looks wild, doesn't it? It's doing all kinds of things that I'm not expecting. <laughs> okay, I might leave that and come back to it later. That might be okay. Just I need like to have some kind of edge here, but maybe I need to leave it to dry for a while. Hmm. <laughs> okay, leave that now. So let's do up here. Let's do this sky bit at last. So I'm going to get some white. Hmm, that's a bit dirty, but but it does look like that kind of colour. Add a touch of yellow ochre. Get a bit more pure white. Okay. And we've got like something like this. Hmm. This is actually quite good fun. Oh, I 
have to be careful not to paint the birds or paint over them. This brush makes some lovely marks. Hmm. So I think that looks better, but I still didn't get that movement, which is this upward movement, this shooting up of the clouds, which is what really attracted me to this um, scene. But in the next one, I will capture that. And let's go back to this car. It's not too bad. It's got quite something quite nice about it. Maybe that's it. I hope so. Yeah, I think that's it. So I finished this painting. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I'm very honest with you about the whole process. I hope you appreciate that. But it's just the easiest way to be. And uh, please have a go. And remember, the most important thing is just to enjoy it. Have fun. So I'll be back again in about two weeks time, hopefully, with another watercolour lesson. Please like and comment. It's really appreciated. Bye for now.